complex conditions, like I alluded to before, there might may be times where you need several conditions to be met. Um, like, like for example, if it's if it's a human and a man, then give it vanilla. Don't give a dog that it's a male dog um, ice cream because they're allergic. So you you use various booleans again, um, and or and not. So for example, yeah, you wanted. In your accessions, accessions are start with A and it ends with three. And you only want those to be executed and it will do that. And this is usually also, like I said, this is usually something that you would do. You normally have more than one condition that is being met. This is an example of either or, um, or. So this is not and. And this is also something that you, that you sometimes um, do look at. Uh, again, in bioinformatics, for example, you might say if, it, uh, if it's an in insertion or a deletion printed to the file called indels. So again, things that you often use. Then you can also get really complicated and you can use ors and ands together. For example, if it's an indel or a deletion and it's in the gene, TP53 print the accession. Okay, so here we've got if it starts with A or B and the accession that starts with A or B also ends in 4, then print that accession. Very nice. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's without conditionals, the, the programming to me is useless. This is by far the most important to me, the most important thing that you, the reason why you start to code is conditions. Again, here, be, be careful with, you thought you're only gonna use brackets ever in school, in math, and that's where it's gonna be important, but yeah, I've put this in brackets because if I didn't, it will, it will do something completely different. Let me just show you. I mean, you can kind of understand what it's going to do, but yeah, I said, if you don't put the brackets around, this, ha this being something that you really want to make sure is true, then it's going to go, um, if it starts with an A or it starts with a B and ends with a, a 4, um, then print it to. So, so these two are basically going to kind of go together and this is going to be on its own. But what you really want is you want to make sure that this is always true in your case it must end in four but these two can be either one of the two right so make sure that you again test it make sure that you there is quite a bit of logic that's going to be involved with conditionals this is purely logical so you need to know when brackets and where the brackets are going to be important based on which part of your Conditionals are negotiable and which are not. Okay. And again, you can go not if it starts with the A and not, and it does not end with uh, six, then print the accession. Okay. So um, it didn't print this one because it starts with the A and it ends with the six, and we, we wanted it to not end with the six. Um, if you remove the not, then it's going to print just the one that starts with. Right, so that negates it. Uh, just a point in the middle of it, which is funny because this is kind of like a break in the middle of it. Um, there are continue and break statements that you might want to get familiar with that you would use often. I showed this example before. Continue means skip. So, for example, for x in range um, 11, if x is equal to or equivalent to 2, skip it. And then there's a break statement that says, once you get to 7, quit this loop. And don't execute or print anything else that follows. So sometimes you have a huge list of millions of lines and you just want to see the script works. Again, that's not the best way to do it. You, you, you might want to... 
um, make this group smaller. But even at that, there may be times where you just wanted to catch the first one or you want to tell it when to stop, then you may, may use a break statement in there. So here you've got a range starting from zero, going to 11. And it prints, it, you can see here it should have printed two, but because we said skip two, it didn't print two. And then we said, if X gets to seven, break and do not print anything else, right? Um, so it, it printed everything else until six and then it stops. So just that might be something that you might want to use. Okay, so here, this is an example with your accessions. If it starts with A, don't print it, right? Skip it. If it starts with P, as soon as you get to an accession that starts with P, stop printing, okay? So as you can see, uh, here we have P, um, and it's not printing anything else that follows that P. And even though you have something starting with S there that should have printed, it's not going to print because you said once it gets to P, break the loop. Note where accession is, it's under the E statement. Um, again, it's very important where you put it. If you put this accession out the print statement outside of the for loop, then it's only going to print you the last variable name that, or the last value that the accession or this variable held, which is the P. So if you want all of them to be printed in accession in a sequence, then you have to print, put the print statement in the for loop. Okay, so now let's um, let's combine what we learned with functions and the and notes a while ago. But let's write a function that returns true if you can if you, your content of your DNA has a ratio of 0.65 returns a false if it's not. And we recall again that we start a function, or at least I do by first writing the logic down and, and then putting that into, until you, you get quite familiar with writing functions, you might wanna first do it this way. First write the, the body of your function and then write the frills of defining the function and the return statement if there needs to be one around that but at least then you know that your function is working. So here you've got a string of DNA that you put into the variable name DNA. This is very familiar to you. You've done this over and over again. You want to see if the DNA content, which you're going to give, so in this case, your AT content is more, makes up more than 65% of this DNA string or sequence. If it is, you want it to print true if not, you want it to print false. So you go, you store your A count. And again, once you get familiar, you can put all of this into, actually all of this into one line. Uh, but for the sake of clarity of reading it, we just separated it. So you count your A's, you convert it to upper. Uh, you, can, you count your T's that's converted to upper uh, in case people have small letters there. And then you do your math, your arithmetic, where you divide that by the length of, let's make it more clear, by your length of the DNA. And then you say with your if statement. So this obviously is now gonna hold a value, right? It's going to hold a, an integer or a float. And then you're going to say, if this value that it's holding is more than 0.65, print true else it. I mean, if you read it, even if you don't know much coding, it kind of, it, it's very logical. So is it more than, in this case, it was more than 65, um, 0.65, so that's why it printed true. And now you can place this whole part inside of a function. Um, so here you've defined your function with that line, which is is AT reach. In other words, is the sequence an AT reach sequence? Um, and you've created your parameter, which is that it's going to take in a DNA sequence and it's going to check all of that. And instead of print, now you put return. Okay. Uh, this, I remember this is not running because you didn't call this. So yeah, I call it at the bottom with one uh, string. This is your 
function, the name of your function that you've defined and you've placed your sequence inside of there. Um, so it's going to return either true or false. And this is a, a, another DNA sequence that you're now going to also check the AT content for. If you print it, you will see the first one has more than 65. Uh, and you will see that the second one is false because it's less than 65. And intuitively, you can also see there's just one AMT, so that's not going to make up more than 65% of the sequence. But you can also make this more precise um, because remember when you have a Boolean, it returns a true or false anyway, right? So you don't need to say, you can just say, for example, um, return true or false if the AT content is less than 65. Because this return statement is, gonna, is going to give you a true or false anyway. This is going to give you a true or false. So basically, you're just saying return the true or false for this expression. Okay, so, and there we go.